Welcome to the annual meeting of the Geological Society of America here in San Antonio, Texas. Nice uh, early morning, people heading into the conference here. And I thought we would take a look at exactly uh, what geologists do at this meeting, give you a little bit of a behind the scenes tour of exactly what takes place at these large professional meetings. Thanks for joining me, I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. We're gonna go inside the GSA meeting, take you through as many parts of it as we can and give you a sense of what goes on here, uh, what the people do, the talks, the posters, the exhibit hall, uh, just what goes down to these large professional meetings. So let's head inside and see what's going on. So here we are in the convention center. This is sort of the registration area over here. You can pick up your field maps and uh, guides and such. And then when you come in, meet with someone and you get your badge. So you get your little badge to wear. And if you want to, you can add fun things to your badge. These little ribbons. So there's some fun ones in here, such as some of these fun little geology things here. Just happens down to earth, rock order. So all the different little fun ribbons you can put on next to your uh, badge there. So it's a big building, there's a lot going on. I got a little cafe here, people heading in to set up their posters. I'll show you that here in a bit. Uh, the exhibit hall, people heading off to talks and such. There's a, a program guide that kind of lets you know what's going on uh, in terms of like what times things are going on and where to be. So yeah, so let's go check out some of the fun things going on here at this GSA conference. So here's some of the other rooms we have here that are um, for some of the different workshops. There's career readiness workshops. There's uh, breakout sessions with authors of books um, you can get career counseling you come in and get your uh, resume and CV up to snuff get mentoring a bunch of job postings here for various parts of geology student in, student opportunities internships uh, and then it's actually staffed by um, quite a few students the students can actually come to the meeting and get reduced uh, registration, or I think they get the registration fee waived, so they can come to the meeting for free, and in return they just have to volunteer a few hours to, you know, staffing uh, some of the speaker rooms or some of the other aspects of the meeting. So here's a nice example of a couple different little smaller rooms where the talks are held. Uh, so here's, for example, one schedule outside the room. This session's called Crossing Borders in the History and Philosophy of the Geosciences. And then you've got a whole list there of all the different talk titles and the times. Here's one called uh, Exploring Geohazards, Science, Society, and Solutions. So a series of uh, sessions and talks there. So you've got the information in the program guide, then you also have uh, this information posted just outside. Here's kind of a typical room, people getting ready for their talk. You can see the screen up there. People at the podium getting ready to give their little presentation. And the talks usually last around usually 12 to 15 minutes or so. So I'm gonna duck into some of these. I think there's some here this morning I wanna go to over here that are related to uh, geoscience education. Yeah, so this is one of the ones I'm going to go to. Current advances in geoscience education research. Listening of talks there. So we'll go check out these talks, but we'll give you guys some more information and a little look at some of the other things going on here at the meeting uh, throughout the day. So here we have the poster hall. This is where students and other folks who have done research or want to present some of their findings you can put together a poster with your information and your research or whatever it is you've been looking into 
and then the idea is you're hanging out by your poster for an hour or two and you're able to have conversations with people. So a little different format than a talk where you only have 12 minutes, maybe a minute or two for questions and then they've got to hustle you off the stage and go to the next um, presenter. But here with the poster you can generally spend a lot more time, get a lot more interaction with other folks as you discuss uh, whatever it is that you've done your research on or want to present at the conference. So all sorts of different um, topics here. There's mapping projects, there's uh, geoscience education, <clears throat> different levels of research. Um, pretty cool. So you can see it's a pretty gregarious kind of setting where there's lots of interaction, exchanging of ideas. This is where a lot of connections are made. People meeting folks that might have similar research interests and exchanging ideas, contact information, whatnot. So uh, for a lot of students, this is an important point because generally I'd say for a lot of students doing research for the first time, they will typically present with a poster. It's a little less intimidating than doing a talk, um, less, less formal, more informal. So it lends itself well for that student to get chance to do research, to present it, and then um, discuss it with people, sort of feel good about it. So pretty interesting though. It's just fun to walk around and see what the different um, posters are about. Uh, can, usually they're presented with kind of all the basic data. It's like an abstract or an introduction, what they did, pretty much scientific method, kind of working your way through all the things that they've done with their research there. But this is the poster hall here at the GSA meeting. The researcher, give us the elevator pitch for what she did with the research. Yes, I would love to. Um, so I am a volcanologist and I study um, water lava interaction. So for this project that I'm presenting on today, um, we're using um, spectroscopy, which is how light interacts with certain materials to study these lava water interactions and hopefully defining end members for future um, and current Martian analog studies. So how we're doing that, we are working in Southeast Idaho, which is a really unique volcanic area of the country. So we're in Southeast Idaho and here, this area that we're studying in particular um, it's called the Breaks, which is near Mud Lake, Idaho. And um, it represents a kind of a moderate level of water lava interaction. So it's um, not quite super explosive, um, like big water. We call it that phreatomagmatic, where there's really big explosions with a lot of water present. This is more moderate, where there's still water present, but maybe not quite as much as those extreme examples. Um, and so this area transitions from a more wet environment to a more dry environment where there's more lava rather than big explosions. Um, so how we're doing this, we're using spectroscopy. So I have this handheld spectrometer, um, which is what the Artemis astronauts will use on the moon and um, similar devices are on the Mars rovers. Um, and eventually when we get astronauts on Mars, they'll use similar devices too. Um, so we're using that to end field observations to um, determine these different rock types that we see um, at this area. So we have different types of spatter, which is a type of um, volcanic deposit where the lava is erupted and it's still kind of molten as it flies through the air and then it hits the ground as spatter and it kind of splashes out a little bit. So we have different types of spatter. We have this sintered scoria, which is a type of um, rock that was kind of exploded and fragmented. Um, representing that water um, part of the eruption. And then we also have these lithic blocks, which are chunks of other material that were incorporated into the um, eruptive products. So what's unique about this is we have basalt, which is kind of what everything else around it is, but we also have this lacustrian, which is lake sediments. Um, so it's kind of unique that we have lake sediments within spatter, right? Um, so how we're doing that, um, how we're looking at it, is using these spectral profiles, which this is reflectance versus wavelength. And based on what these signatures look like, we can interpret what minerals might be present um, and the texture of these rocks. And overall, comparing the different um, spectral profiles together, we can look at the shapes of the wiggles and the depths of these 
wiggles. Um, and putting these patterns together, we can, um, so if we see these similar patterns on the Mars rovers or um, the Mars satellite, we can interpret that there's similar patterns um, and similar water lava interactions happening on Mars. So basically the spectral um, signature, will, which is picking up the minerals, will give you a sense of like what the eruptive characteristics were. Like yeah. This is the first time this has been done? I've never heard of this. Um, yeah, so spectroscopy is a, um, a pretty established science, but it's kind of new to the world of volcanology. Um, and so defining water lava interactions with this method um, is kind of new. I'm sure people have done it before, but um, like in this particular area um, and like the, this combination of rock types mm -hmm. um, and established getting those spectral end members for looking at these different rock types that are all in the same area. Because right. like we've seen lacustrian in the spectra before, we've seen basalt in the spectra before, but what does it look like when it's together? And right. that togetherness is that water lava interaction um, that's that could potentially be on Mars, um, which would be important to try to find on Mars. So like yeah. um, past habitability, future habitability on Mars all depends on water. What's yeah. the next step um, I'd love to be a professor. Okay. I've always wanted to teach. Um, yeah. So I'd love to do that and work with students, mentor them in research and education. Here we've got one of the big brands in geology that makes rock hammers, Estwing, with all the different rock hammers there. Stream tables, so places where you can see uh, sediment transported. You can see the current moving there. Hopefully you guys can see that. And the sediment being transported, these little uh, basically mini dunes being created by the current transporting the sediment there. Pretty cool stuff. So different things you could use for either uh, research and analysis or even um, teaching. Like, here's like a graduate school, state surveys, Kentucky State geological survey and again there's just like you know lanes and lanes of this stuff it's like going to the it's like the flea market i suppose or the county fair approach of geology here we have a bunch of schools here so a bunch of universities talking to people about their graduate programs undergrad programs so it's a bit of a recruiting place to get students to come in but then again there's these other entities that are just sort of peddling their wares as uh, what they do. Just professional organizations and such. More vendors here. This is one of the vendors that makes the, or sells a lot of the field equipment we use in geology. So you've got like rock hammers, chisels, little microscopes. Here's one of the vendors that sells a lot of the field equipment we use in geology. So you can see like hammers and uh, hand lenses, gloves, all sorts of supplies, backpacks. This is uh, forestry suppliers. Well, I mean, that's yeah. So lots of just different vendors here. Uh, just anything related to geology world could be research equipment, could be book publishers, uh, obviously schools like we talked about. Just a fun place to wander around and talk to folks about something related to geology. Well, that's a wrap. Our final day here at the GSA conference in San Antonio. Hope you enjoyed a little look behind the scenes, uh, just what goes on at these annual meetings of professional geologists and anyone that's interested. These meetings are actually open to the public, so if you, there's one in your area and you want to attend, just sign up, go to talks, attend field trips, uh, and enjoy. Thanks for joining me on this little excursion, and we'll see you next time.